So, so just coming today to ask you about your depression. So take it away. I, from the age of 16 to 26, suffered from a clinical depression, borderline personality disorder, psychosis, and paranoia to the extreme. Uh, depression, as I would describe it, is a horrible, painful thing. It's a dark, deep thing that you can't get rid of. It sucks the life out of you completely to the point where you don't want to get up or go out or leave or do anything but wallow and eventually you get to the point where you try to kill yourself. It's not feeling a little bit down, it's not the Monday morning blues, it's um, darkness. That's how I would describe it. Okay, and then your suicide attempts then. So why did you do that? Because I wanted to die. That's why I did it, because I wanted to die. Um, um, I always say to people, if we all pause for a moment, and you all try to poke yourself in the eye, and then what happens? Your eye it closes, protects your eye. Your body does that same thing that's built to protect yourself. So when you kind of people that try to kill themselves, remember they've got to the point where their body, they, they've managed to get past the, the brain going, no, you don't do this, we don't do this to ourselves, we don't do it. Stop, stop, stop. They've got to that point, but they that point. Everyone in this room, right now, watching this video, the worst thing that they think could happen to them is that they would die. You have to remember that someone's got to that point where all they want to do is die. Um, what... What uh, effects on your life did depression have? It stole 10 years of my life. I spent 10 years of my life in the house. I left the house to go for doctor's appointments. I went shopping with my mommy. I didn't go, I couldn't go by myself. I thought people were going to kill me. I took knives out. Um, I, my family hid knives, tablets. Um, they cried um, for me, with me. Uh, the only good thing that depression ever did for us probably was bring us all closer together and give us some really funny stories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was about it. And your, what treatment did you receive then for your depression? I was on antidepressants, um, antipsychotics, um, diazepam, sleeping tablets, um, muscle relaxants, um, and tablets to help me because I got an ulcer so it was side effects from the medicine I received inpatient treatment in Mid North and North Blackham Hospital I had a consultant psychiatrist Dr Green a clinical psychologist Dr Graham and a GP Dr Courtney and two community psychiatric nurse teams who looked after me at different stages not I didn't need two teams at one time <laughs> and that's what I received and did the treatment help you or not particularly, no, because it wasn't, people always think psychiatric treatment is, you know, uh, like in America, we lie on the couch and talk about your problems, but for years I didn't get that, it's basically, you go in, you don't speak to the consultant, you speak to the, the, lo the underlings, they write down everything, then you go into the room, he reads everything and then says, so how you doing? <laughs> and he's read, I was doing. <laughs> so, and that's, that was the treatment, and it was like, we want to continue on this. Or, okay, so you're feeling a wee bit more paranoid, we're going to up this. How do you feel about that? Um, and you were like, well, I don't know what else there is to do, so I suppose I'm fine about it. Um, Dr. Courtney was very good, because he would explain what the extra medication would actually do to me. And then he would give me, they could give me the gastroenteritis tablets to stop the pains in my stomach. And he gave me the muscle relaxants, because my neck used to tense like that there. Um, not one of our funny stories. Um, and that was it, really. And one of your clinical psychologists gave you coping mechanisms? Yes, that was about the last year I was sick. That didn't work and was probably sick. I got, finally got an appointment with Dr. Graham. Very lucky to get an appointment with Dr. Graham. And he didn't give me medication. He just talked and he listened to me. It was like the American show. He gave me coping mechanisms, breathing mechanisms to stop the panic attacks. He showed me statistics about how many people got stabbed by strangers um, and he encouraged me to get up and leave the house and get a job which I did and, and turned my life around and it was nice. And then your experience in the inpatient wards with nurses, how did you find them? Were they approachable? And No, no. Um, nurses, I think nursing is a job that you have to be called to do. You have to have the, not the calling and all the sense of 
really stupid and can't explain it better than that. You, it's something that you have you feel I want to care for people, and that that's what you know you should do. You know, I work in hospitality because I love looking after people and feeding people and making sure their rooms are right and their food's right and everything else. And I'm assuming for a nurse, it's the same thing. It shouldn't just be a job. It's a calling, a vocation. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Uh, because the nursing in the inpatient unit, no interaction with them. They would present my case to the doctor with me sitting in the room. And I always wondered how they knew, because they never spoke to me, except to tell me to turn the music down or dinner was ready, or uh, that was it, really, the only interaction we had. And there was nothing for you to do in that inpatient unit, was there? No, no, I did get one art therapy class. Um, it was just about the greatest time ever. Uh, Mum still has a picture. And that I painted, I wrote in the bottom of it, Christopher Ray, age... 18 and a half, but um, it was just stupid and pointless. Um, and then when I painted pictures, I wanted to go home, I wanted somebody to help me. And the rest of the time, I sat in the room smoking mm -hmm. like a train. So, um, obviously, depression's on the increase in our young people. So, is there any advice you can give us as future nurses on how to relate to young people with depression? Like any other person. The worst feeling you ever got in the class and stuff where you were embarrassed. No one ever said to you, it's okay. No, we're here to look after you. We'll, we'll do it okay. So my advice is if you're not here, because you're not in this room because you care about people, if you're here because it's a job, then you probably should get up and leave and go and do lab work or something. Because not once did anybody ever stop and take the time to do that with me. And it was a little simple things like that there. Because, you know, I didn't want more tablets. I didn't want anything else. I just wanted to, to die. Um, and no one ever addressed that issue. No one ever asked me why do you want to die. What well, what is it about your life that makes you you want to die? Um, so simple things: get them up, get them changed, get them done and out of bed, and help you make the bed. Take them for a walk around the hospital, talk to them, and interact with them. Ask them if they're okay. If they're sully and sulky and everything else with you. Just take it on the chin, um, because it makes a difference. It would have made a difference for me. But it didn't. Um, I always say that the tablets didn't get me better. The mental health didn't get me better. Dr. Graham taught me how to get better. And together as a family, we got me better. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason I'm here. It's got nothing to do with the NHS. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. Goodbye. And good Bye. Luck.